I mean, at Steubenville, I went to University of Steubenville, and I loved it. And and Steubenville, we were educated to kind of debate Protestants, right? Mm-hmm. It was the the big schism was between Catholics yeah. and Protestants. The new so, atheism hadn't hit yet, so right? we weren't even addressing theistic apologetics exactly. at that point. So, so this was the main focus. So. Protestants come in and there were many Protestants who would put on their church signs Catholic, right? Not many, but a few. And and it confuses Catholics. They, you know, mm-hmm. they go there and they just mean, oh, we're universal too, right? Or we're the authentic Catholics. We put Catholic up there. So there was this defense. You call yourselves Catholic, but you're really not. And many of us when as students as students there had that mindset. So when we as Byzantine Catholics came in and the seminary was 45 minutes away. So the seminary one time came to Steubenville and we took over a normal mass spot and had a divine liturgy at that spot with Mm. 300 students that were just going to mass. We had a divine liturgy. And so then we said afterwards, I was still a student, but the priest says, this is probably very different from most of you. I'm going to have a Q and a in this classroom. And this one guy came in just heated he walked into the back of the Q&A, screamed that we were, were other, were different, how dare we call ourselves Catholic, then left, just so mad. And I, I saw in him, as frustrated as it was, I saw in him this defensiveness that was looking for that uniformity. But his big issue was actually with the way we, one of the big issues was with the way we chanted. He says, there's no heart and soul in the way you chant, because he was very, very charismatic. <laughs> right, right. And he just says, that there's nothing there. There's no passion there. And he left. And it was funny, because one of the priests who was there said, I actually converted to Byzantine Catholicism from evangelicalism. Like, <laughs> I converted from charismatic worship Mm. and i find as much and more heart because of my personality in the byzantine chant the way of music than there was there so but it was just this one kid who was just causing trouble but but yeah there there is a reaction i mean if you if you want to kind of acknowledge what good we can in that young man you know what was he desiring he he was desire he didn't want the truth to be watered down um you know i mean we're all very passionate when we're young and yeah you know and i'm even of the case not to get us something else, but like with the Pachamama. Like I I believe that there are- Here we go, Pachamama. <laughs> write that down, Neil. Here we go. I, I, Talk I be- about the Pachamama, Father. So I believe that they're, that they're again, I'm always looking for the good, my, my disposition. So I believe that there were subtleties in what happened during that synod. I believe there were subtleties we need to understand. I would not have been the guy to go grab the Pachamama and throw it in the Tiber. But you probably wouldn't have been the guy who- Belt, you know, no, uh, bowed down. No, before I would. Idol. I would have been an observer to say we need to give it more time, and I need the truth to reveal itself. But I am so glad somebody did. <gasps> I'm so glad someone <laughs> grabbed it and threw it in because I'm saying I'm glad that passion is still there. Yeah. We as a church need to say we can't do this and not expect. A, a, a strong reaction. I would have been the type, let me give this a few days. Let me really find the answers here before I react. But I'm so glad the church needs to know that Catholics are going to react to something that looks like an idol, even if idolatry. it's not. Exactly. No. If it looks like it, you're going to get passionate Catholics who are going to go throw that, burn it. There's a venerable tradition. So I loved the fact that it happened, mm. even though it wouldn't have been me. And I, I think that's one of those things with the subtleties we need to understand is that I, I like the passion. Mm. I like I like the Orthodox screaming and yelling at us because it is holding <laughs> us accountable. It's making us answer their questions. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.